go you I know I got it started. Maybe I need to turn the choke off. Doesn't huh. seem like that's the right thing, but maybe it is. Time for an update. I've just been working in the garden. I'm trying to tidy up our garage and thought I would come and share a few of my thoughts um, about the last few weeks and what has been circling in my brain. So this little area behind me is my garden tool area. And right here, this door goes right out to where the garden's gonna be. So that's how I've kind of organized it. I didn't wanna have to build another structure for tools and the cool thing about this area is that it's insulated so all my tools are in here and they're safe and I'm just really excited. We found this pegboard actually in the garage. We painted it and mounted it and it's just really fun to like see my tools all beautiful on the pegboard and then that was also here and I've just hung up my tools. Um, pro tip on tools, get them on Facebook Marketplace or antique malls, get them used. It's so much more affordable and good tools last forever if you take care of them. We've been work. I, I have my husband emotionally supporting me, <laughs> have been, phys I've been physically working on the garden and where I'm at in that process is just, I'm trying to get the earth up is basically what I need to do. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Some people just kill the grass. Some people remove the sod. I'm trying to use a tiller um, to kind of help me loosen it up. And I would say it's working. I think I need to learn more about how to use the tiller effectively, but overall it's going pretty good. So once I get the grass up, we are going to lay compost and then mulch. And I've contacted a local tree person that I'm hoping is going to come through with dropping some mulch off on the property so that I can mulch it. So I kind of like to go with the garden method of never leaving the ground bare. So, you know, now that I'm getting all this dirt, this grass up, I'm leaving the ground bare. And so I really need to put something there, whether it's compost and mulch, or I plant something this fall, I need to do something with that space. So there's a couple of different thoughts circling in my head. We're thinking we're gonna make a long journey to get compost that I feel is safe. It's like four hours from here to get good compost um, that doesn't have any cow manure, which the whole, the whole thought process in avoiding cow manure right now is that I don't want to get graze on in my garden, which can be an issue here um, because that's how some people like how they practice. They use graze on to each their own. I just don't want it on my land um, because it affects nightshades and it could totally destroy my garden for a few years And so I just really want to keep it out of my stuff So I'm hesitant to get any compost locally. There really isn't a place to get it. So We are probably going to travel to get it Just for this season and then the goal is to have our own compost or use manure from our animals that we obtain so that was a little tangent, but Till the earth, lay compost, lay some mulch, get the earth covered. If I can't get compost, if it's if I feel like the earth is bare too long or whatever, I'm thinking about planting cover crops for this winter. One of the ones that I've read is supposed to be really good for colder areas is fava bean. And so I'm thinking about doing that and just seeing what happens. Um, Beans are usually good nitrogen fixers, so if the soil is not ideal, it should still do something. And planting a bean will also kind of help me test the waters on, is there anything else in this soil here? Like, is there graze on still lurking around? From, from the research I did and the people I contacted that would know, it hasn't been sprayed on this property for three years. And the conservation district person that's also helping me with some tree planting said, we should be okay um, within three years. So, I mean, post three years. So we should be okay, even though it was sprayed here, it should have broken down and all that stuff. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, because that can be a real issue for gardens and you really kind of want to try to avoid that if you can. 
So I think that's it. That's kind of like the main project. Um, I'll update you on the shelter belt later when I get some footage of the work we're doing out there. It's gonna be a really long process to getting that going. And I was really hopeful to plant this fall or next spring. And I just don't even know if that's gonna happen, but we're just gonna keep trucking at it day by day. I've had some philosophical thoughts about all of this. I've been overwhelmed with starting. I've been, I felt like I've, I've never felt this about something. I've never felt so like, it's just so many things to learn. Like it's so many things to learn. You have to learn about machines because you're now operating a small motor to plow your garden. Do you know, you know, what is the choke and how do you, uh, all these different little things. Like there's so many things to learn. And um, I feel like it's given me empathy as a dietitian because I think, wow, like maybe this is how people feel when they're trying to learn how to eat healthy. Like it feels so, so foreign maybe, or it feels so overwhelming that you need to learn how to cook and you need to learn how to exercise and all these things. So it's given me some empathy there and just the perspective of start. Like I just have to start. I've had a garden before. It's just never been on this scale. And that's the part that's overwhelming me is that I want to challenge myself to grow a much larger garden and to really produce, really up the food production that we do ourselves. So it's just been a mind game partially of Bowen. You have to start, you have to do something. It, it doesn't have to be the whole garden today, but you need to get out there and plow one row. And that's just, I'm just, every morning I'm like, do something, something small. All of these small habits are gonna lead to the end result. And the other part of it is that adaptation. I have to adapt if it's not working. I don't know the perfect way because the thing about gardening and you know, that sort of stuff is that everyone has their way of doing it. And the only way you learn your way is by doing it. And I remember that from when I started my backyard garden was, yeah, like, you know, people told me, nah, don't start a garden that like, you don't have enough space and it's just going to be a mess and you're going to be moving away. Like, don't, don't, don't bother. And I was just like, I had to turn that off and do it. And I'm so glad I did because of all the things I learned and in that small garden space. And now that garden is living on and it's blessing another family and it makes me really, really happy. Um, so the garden, my old garden is still there. I get updates from the current owners and it makes me so, so happy. But anyway, start somewhere. That's the lesson. It's, it's just find the thing that feels the most manageable and do it, even if it's 20 minutes and keep going, keep going. <laughs> so that's where we're at. And hopefully soon I'll have more updates and more prog progress. My, my, Goal this weekend is to get a chainsaw and build some compost bins. We're going to get a chainsaw because I think we're going to be taking out some trees ourselves. So stay tuned for that because that could be interesting. But thanks for watching and we're excited to, I should say, I'm excited to update y'all again. So have a good week.